Hello, EKG Online students. I wanted to give you a little bit more instruction about my expectations for Module 1. So, um, Module 1 starts off with this PowerPoint right here. And I wanted to go through some of the finer points of this PowerPoint that I wanted you to understand. <clears throat> okay, essentially it gives an overview of blood that you may have seen before. Um, but I just wanted to give um, an explanation of the different parts of the heart that they'll be talking about in this um, module. So um, the circulation is very important. Um, so essentially the systemic circulation is how the heart gets blood and oxygenation from the heart to the rest of the body and from the rest of the body back to the heart. Pulmonary circulation is how we get the blood from the heart to the lungs and from the lungs back to the heart. The circulation of the heart is what I'd like to focus on or at least give more explanation on because um, you know getting the blood from the heart to the lung seems pretty intuitive, but it may not seem intuitive um, with regard to the heart and the circulation through the heart. Okay, so just a moment. Okay. I'm going to move this over to my other screen so you can see this a little bit better. Okay. All right. Now the blood flow of the heart is something that you may have had to memorize in a previous A&P class or something, something to that extent. It's really important to understand it in this particular class because what you're going to be measuring is how the heart and it's a different point squeeze to give you a heartbeat that is also recognized on the EKG. So as the body uses all of the oxygen in the blood, the blood goes back to the superior and the inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava gets blood back from the head and the arms and part of the trunk. And the inferior um, gets blood back from the rest of the trunk and the legs. So they all, this blood all culminates in the right atrium. And that is where blood enters the heart um, from the vena cava to the right atrium. It goes through the tricuspid valve. And it's called the tricuspid valve because there are three cusps on it or three flaps that open up into one opening. And then it goes into the right ventricle. Now blood is pushed out of the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve, through the pulmonary artery, and into the lungs. Now, until the blood goes into the lungs, as you can see from the vena cava, right atrium, tricuspid, right ventricle, pulmonary valve, into the pulmonary artery, it is all deoxygenated. So this is the blood that the body has completely used up. And as it travels back from the lungs to get oxygenated, it comes back into the pulmonary vein, into the left atrium, and then through the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve, either one are correct, into the left ventricle. Now, as you can see, the left ventricle has a lot of muscle around it, much more than the right ventricle does. And the reason for that is the left ventricle has to squeeze and pump the blood through the aortic valve into the aorta and then out to the rest of the body. So it's this squeezing motion that gets our oxygenated blood out to where it needs to be. So um, as we're talking about the heart, once again, the blood flow is from the superior and inferior vena cava to the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve, through the right ventricle, and through the pulmonary valve, and then through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. After the blood gets oxygenated, it comes back in from the pulmonary veins, the left atrium, the bicuspid or mitral valve, 
into the left ventricle, and that gets pumped through the aortic valve out of the aorta and then to the rest of the body. What I want you to know for a quiz that you will have in module three is the entire flow of blood through the heart. I want you to be able to get a blank sheet of paper and write it out from beginning to end. Um, each structure, um, I want you to be able to list each structure and then next to each structure, delineate whether the blood in that structure is oxygenated or deoxygenated. Now, one of the um, exceptions in this whole situation is many of you have memorized already that veins carry deoxygenated blood and arteries carry oxygenated blood. That is true throughout the heart, throughout the heart and throughout the body, except for this one piece over here. For some reason, a pulmonary artery is what takes the blood to the lungs, and this is deoxygenated. And then the blood comes back oxygenated through the pulmonary veins. This is the only exception in the entire body where there is deoxygenated blood in an artery and oxygenated blood in a vein. So don't let that trip you up. That's a little bit confusing. So that is something that I want you to know and be able to have down <clears throat> as a takeaway from module one. Now, once you understand and memorize that, go on to the next slide, because here is something that I also want you to understand. The heart has an electrical flow as well, and there are different pressure points of the electrical flow. So the SA node or the sinoatrial node is at the very top of the right atrium. The AV node is right down near the bottom of the right atrium and going into the right ventricle. And then you have the um, Purkinje fibers and the bundle of Hiss right down here. Now, the, the flow of current goes from the SA node to the AV node through the bundle of Hiss and then out into the heart through the Purkinje fibers. So that flow is a little bit um, less complex, but one of the ones there are a bunch of things I want you to know about that. First of all, the SA node is the pacemaker. It sets the pace for the heart. Now, the SA node usually sets a signal at between 100, and 100 beats per minute and 80 beats per minute. And essentially what that is setting up is it wants to send, start off with a, heart, a stronger signal at the top because the current goes through the heart like you would see at a sports event, um, like, like people doing the wave around the stadium. So that's how the, electric, the electricity goes from one area to the next. So they start off really high, 100 beats per minute to 80 beats per minute, and then go down to the AV node. The AV node continues the signal um, between 60 and 40 beats per minute. Now, whatever the signal is coming through the SA node and the AV node, if you average the two of them, that is your overall heartbeat. So if someone needs a pacemaker, it's usually because their SA node is not firing the way that it should. Now, if it's not firing the way that it should, at some points the AV node can take over by sending its signal um, by 80 beats per minute to 60 beats per minute, but we want a strong signal so all that blood gets out to the body that we need. Now, in the um, bundle of Hiss, the signal continues um, from about zero beats per minute to 40 beats per minute, and then comes out of the Purkinje fibers. So that is how the blood and the electricity and the heart are related. Okay, so systole is the contraction of the blood and the heart, or in other words, squeezing. Diastole is the relaxation. So um, we usually do the, um, the distal over, um, the systole for when we do blood pressure. And so um, <clears throat> that is something that you'll come up with in the future. So systole is the squeezing and the diastole is the, rela the relaxing of the heart. Now, just to briefly explain this and we'll go into a lot more detail in the future, the P wave is the constriction of the atria. And then there's a pause. The QRS wave is the constriction of the ventricles. And you can see that is a higher frequency because, um, and a higher voltage because it's a stronger squeezing of the heart. The T wave is the recalibration of both 
and of, of the ventricle and then the t between the T and the U wave that is the recalibration of both. Sometimes you will not see the U wave. Now because this is like a Cartesian grid, we say the QRS wave is the Q point, the R point, and the S point. In future, one of the ways that I'm going to show you how to tell someone's EKG is going to be the R to R interval, but we will talk more about that in the future. So you can read further on um, the details between the P wave, the Q wave, the QRS wave, and the T wave. And um, if you have any questions, you can let me know. And then that pretty much concludes the information um, in this module. But I want you as a take home to understand exactly how the blood flow and the electricity flow goes through the heart, because you will be tested on that in the future. If you have any additional questions, please let me know.